Hello, beautiful people, and welcome Hi. to the Nebulet Ask the Jeff. As is now usual for Ask the Jeff, I'm going to be answering questions from my Twitch chat. So if you want to ask a question for the next one, pay attention to the community posts on YouTube uh, and follow me on Twitch. And while we're here, might as well like the video, right? True. But before we get into the specific questions, let's summarize his overall place in the meta and what has changed for him since his last rerun. Or since, I guess, his first, his first run, not his last rerun. Since his first run, we have gotten Farina, Charlotte, Navia, Rose, Gumming, Xionyun, and Chiori. Now, Farina actually matters a decent amount. So we're going to talk about how Farina has impacted him. But the other units mostly haven't. Although I will say there is some funny stuff with Xianyun that we can talk about as well. Either way, his overall place in the meta is, as I'm sure you're aware by now, if you watch any Genshin content, uh, he's pretty good. He's definitely one of the better on-fielders you can use. If you're looking at specifically on-fielders, he's arguably the best one. But he doesn't necessarily have actual DPS that overshadows other strong teams. The reason why he's so strong is that he has DPS that rivals other strong teams while also having what is arguably the most valuable feature that a carry can have, which is the ability to make basically all of his damage fully AoE in almost every situation. Three enemies on the line, easy, let's do this. Hog, your AoE. If your enemy's not in a line, you can even rotate your camera quickly while you're... And you're still effectively hitting AoE, right? Honestly, if you want to be doing this, increase your mouse sensitivity so it's easier, and also be aware of that motion sickness. It gives me very bad motion sickness to actually do it, so just keep that in mind. But even then, right, like in most situations, right, if I can, if I can, let me try to push this guy a little bit. This mostly looks like a AoE that's in where it's hard to hit all of them. But with the right angle, oh my god. Oh. Have you ever seen the screen in Abyss, by the way? <laughs> All right, with the right angles, you can still... Yeah. At least get them close enough that just a little bit of wiggle is gonna be enough. And most enemies, you can somewhat bait a little bit. And then here, we're hitting basically all of them, right? Point mainly just being, it's very, very easy for his damage to be hitting all of the relevant enemies at the same time. And unlike most of the other AoE units, he doesn't actually sacrifice single target performance for that, which is why he's overall such a strong on-fielder. He's strong, cool, but what do these teams look like? Is he reliant on specific units for his teams to be good? And I would say that his teams are very flexible. Now, our benchmark for his teams, for now, is gonna be what is arguably the best one of his teams, which is this one. Now, in this team, you only get two of the three stacks of his passive that increases his damage based on hydro reactions. But whenever you're fighting enemies that either can apply auras to a pyro aura to Kazuha, so you can infuse it with his burst or skill and therefore trigger vaporize, or you're fighting enemies that have innate auras themselves, like the J Blue Terror Shroom will periodically infuse himself with Dendro, so you can trigger Bloom and get your third stack with that. These guys have a Dendro Shield, you can trigger Bloom, get your stack with that, you can trigger Vape, get your stack with that. There's a Pyro Aura on these, or a Pyro Leyline or whatever, I don't know what it's called. A Pyro Debuff on these guys that applies power to you, so you can use that to power infuse a Kazuha Burst and get your third stack with that. Anyways, the point just being, in a lot of situations, you can still get the third stack. And when you can get the third stack, this team is very much arguably his, his best, like, overall team. That being said, Nebulet is still a very strong unit when you can't cheat out the third stack, and if you can't cheat out the third stack, then teams that get the third stack naturally become a bit more competitive. And you can either go for some vape stuff, right? You can go with Shang Lang, you can ditch the Kazuha for Nahida if you want, even more reliability on your vapes. You can go for Hyper Bloom, right? Something like this, with honestly any third slot. My personal favorite being Dea. You can go for Freeze if you're fighting annoying enemies that you're afraid will move too much to be easy to hit an AoE or whatever by using a unit like Lila, which... Uh, or Kea, or Rosaria, or anyone really. But yeah, overall, if you're a relatively new player who doesn't have the other five stars that are in his arguably better team, what sort of teams are you gonna be looking at? Maybe you're gonna be looking at something like Sucrose, Lila, you can look at Fischl, maybe not with Lila, but 
to grow a special any defensive option. Or you could just straight up use Shangling here. You can use Lila as well. You can do something like this, the Hyper Bloom core. And while these teams don't tend to be his strongest teams, they generally tend to perform more than well enough to be able to clear. Generally, his better teams will very often involve Kazuha. And I'll, I'll get into a lot of more specific Kazuha stuff in my Ask the Jeff on Kazuha, but I don't want anyone to feel like they have to get both for Nivellet to be good. I want to make it very clear, Nivellet is still good even if you don't get both. Like he's still he he's still more than good enough without Kazuha. Uh yeah, you can also go for the same like cores as the ones with Farina and run another Hydro instead. It's not gonna be as good as Farina, but I mean you can run Child to get the talent level and to not have to swap to him so you can effectively start your damage part of your rotation earlier. But meh. You can run Yelan for a bit of damage percent. But you're not gonna be procking her her ult very much. Uh, you can run Sing So for some resistance or interruption, but again, you're not gonna be procking his ult. But yeah, so that basically does it for his overall strength in the meta and how good he is and the, the baseline reliance on other characters and how, I, how he can perform overall. So let's move into uh, questions from Twitch chat. What about plunge? Okay, fine. We can talk. We can start with that. This is unironically a real Nevilet team. It is worth mentioning that it's also unironically a real Barbara team. Nevilet doesn't have any special synergy in this team other than the fact that he has okay base attack and crit damage as ascension. Those are relevant, but he like it's not really making use of his kit basically at all. That being said, it is still a good team just because Shanyan is Shanyan. Definitely not one of his better ones, but I, I mean, I can show it. it it's I, I like playing it. I think it's really funny. I both love and hate this team. I hate the fact that it works. I, I love it because it's funny. Oh my god. I dropped Golba, so I f***ed up, but it's fine. It's fine, whatever. Anyways, point being, it's not one of his best teams, right? Which is why I didn't mention it earlier, but it is real and it can hurt you. I'm sorry for exposing you to this forbidden knowledge. How is Ayato compared to Nebulet? Are there any team where Ayato is not just a downgrade? Ayato is generally just a downgrade. There's one team where he can be argued to be competitive or better, which is in Nilo teams. Yeah, uh, that should tell you all you need to know. That being said, even even in Nilo teams, Nivellet is still good. And going for a traditional Nivellet build in a Nilo team gives you a pretty good way of dealing with single target because your damage becomes a bit less reliant on Bloom and more talent value. And obviously Bloom deals double damage in AoE. You touched on how incredibly easy he is to play versus other characters. I did that a little bit in the in the meta overview at the beginning. Uh, I guess one thing I haven't mentioned, let me just very quickly put him back on the right build, is his ability 
to kite enemies and his ability to do damage from a range. I don't want to go through the whole abyss again, but when you're fighting enemies like Coplia, being able to do damage from a distance is a pretty big deal because Coplia does a, a lot of damage and a lot of a lot of interruption. So being able to hit from far away can effectively let you be invulnerable to some of the attack patterns that the bosses have, which obviously is going to help quite a bit, right? Being able to do most of your damage like this, right? You're not in melee range getting by that. You're just chilling, looking at them from far away. Plus, even if you do take chip damage, right? Oh no, I'm 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 getting hit. Oh golly, good goodness! Ah, I'm full HP. Well, not quite. I'm full HP. I'm full HP. You you have a lot of self-healing, which helps you mitigate any damage you, you might take. On top of that, when you're fighting melee enemies that aren't bosses, or even, even some bosses, but mobile ones, while you're attacking, you can go backwards, and that ability to basically kite enemies lets you avoid a lot more attacks. Given that Nivinit is already good at C0, do you think it's healthy for the game before he decides to release more units that are his power level or stronger than him in the near future? I definitely think that Nivinit is potential bad sign for the future of the game. If they keep releasing units on the same level as him and on the same ease of play as him, because at, at the end of the day, right, a team just being good doesn't mean you'll be able to clear Abyss with it. You also, for some characters, need to play it well. And when you reduce the, the skill requirements and make it so that it's easy to clear on everything, well, they don't want you to be able to clear in a trivial manner, so they're going to increase difficulty of Abyss. And if you if you look at the, the Abyss difficulty increase from 1.0 to this day, it's massive. What was it in 1.0, the whole chamber would be the first of four waves nowadays. All right, like the, the DPS requirements went up quite a bit. If, even if you're not compared to 1.0, even if you're comparing to 2.0, it's still it's still more rough. And if they keep releasing units like Nivilet, I expect that to keep getting even more difficult, eventually reaching the point where some of the weaker five stars just won't be able to clear even at hyper investment. And I think that sucks because, you know, I know a lot of people have a unit they really like and want to be able to play them everywhere. All right, like I think that's just really unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just it's the whole the whole discussion of power creep, right? On one hand, power creep is an easy way of making new units shinier, so you want to get them more. On the other, if there is power creep, then the older units become less shiny in a way that actually f***ing sucks for anyone who likes the old units. I've been relatively happy that Genshin has kept power creep to a minimum through the years, but Nevilet is definitely a, a worrying sign. Would you recommend him for a new player before pulling important supports like Kazuha, Zhongli, Farina? I think it really depends, right? At the end of the day, right? His ability to consolidate his AoE, right? His ability to actually get his damage out onto all the enemies in a chamber is very, very valuable. And it can be difficult for a lot of other carries to do that to the point where a Nevilet team with relatively weak supports that are not that synergistic in a lot of more AoE focused chambers is likely to perform better than a strong single target focused team, like even a very strong hyper invested single target focused team. And in situations like that, then obviously Nevilet would give you more value than supports that would increase the strength of those teams. I think that he is strong enough that if you like him and you like his play style, you can consider him over some of the five star supports, yeah. But do keep in mind that you can only have two on fielders on a team, like in Abyss, right? One on either side. If Abyss is your main motivator for which characters you want to pull, even if it's not Abyss, even if, honestly, any any part of the combat is your motivator for who you want to pull, you're never going to need more than two teams. And if you already have two carries that you like, if you pull for an unit and you end up benching him, he's completely useless. A unit that is not on your team is useless. And so I, st I, I don't think it's a, a, a general piece of advice that you should go on Nevilet first for every account. It's definitely a strong thing that you can do, but just keep in mind that it's going to mean that you're if you're playing him, you're not playing another one of your carries. We mentioned the ways balls, expires, and are picked up. Um, Nevilet's balls can be a huge pain in the ass sometimes. Right, so the way that they work is it'll pick up balls that are in a cone in front of you. Not exactly sure the angle of the cone. Okay. Right, so if I do this, I'm not picking anything up. Right? Oh, they expire. I know, I, I picked them up like when I was around here. There we go, right? 
So it's this angle. Uh, I think you can also pick them up if they're slightly behind. I'm not sure. Yeah, if they're slightly behind as well. I'm not entirely sure how it prioritizes, but I know that in most situations, it's gonna be too much of a pain in the ass to like make sure you're picking up the ones you generated first. Now what that means is, in a lot of teams, right, use his E, then you swap out, and you do other things, and then you go back to him, and use Burst and then charge that, right? And I use your E. I'll wait until these guys do the annoying thing so I can... Use your E. You go to your other character, use your Jolly E. Maybe Kazuha E1, Freyna EQ, whatever, cool. Then you swap back to him, and you burst, and then you E again, and you have a bunch of balls. However, sometimes the balls that you generated first won't be the ones you pick up first. And you're gonna end up, instead of the four charge dice you should be able to get from E, Q, E, you're gonna end up only getting three. Maybe you end up with two balls because you accidentally picked up one of the newer balls instead of the uh, instead of the older balls. What I'm getting at here is that there are going to be situations where you end up missing out on a charge attack because of the way that the balls work. Especially if you have to move across different waves, if they spawn on different sides of the room, stuff like that. That being said, as long as you're paying attention to it, even if you only pick two, right? You can just keep holding until the charge attack goes through anyways. And it's not that big of a deal. If you are certain that you have at least three balls, right? This is the default speed at which uh, you pick up the balls and you start attacking, right? I hold my button, it goes, right? But you can actually start holding and then immediately, as, as soon as he starts the charge attack animation, release it and end up releasing it a lot earlier like this. Hold, release, right? And when you do that, obviously, it goes through a lot faster. And you can... Effectively increase your DPS by getting them faster, but yeah. Here I wasn't sure, I didn't see the third ball, so I just didn't do the trick of, of getting it faster. Is it cope to use sack on him for more balls and energy? When you're playing vape team, sack is very decent. Otherwise, it's generally not great. How good is Beto with Neville? Beto is a fine option. I talked about Beto a lot in my pre-release. I think that Neville ended up being a lot less reliant on stagger resistance than I expected him to be, which made the resistance interruption or the re resistance to interruption you get from Beto a lot less valuable. She's still very much a solid option with him, but not necessarily the best one. Can Neville max the fanfare stacks without a healer? Yes and no. Can he max it out? Yes. Will he max it out? Not early enough into your rotation that it really matters. Generally, when you're playing teams without a healer with Neville, you're just accepting that your average amount of, of fanfare stacks is going to be a decent amount lower than when you're playing a team with a healer. That's not necessarily a bad thing, though, because obviously, well, he can get away without a healer because he heals himself so much, and losing a bit of damage percent from fanfare, you still get a decent amount of fanfare, and, well, it lets you run units that aren't healers, which often do more than units that are healers outside of the healing. How much of an improvement is he in Hyperbloom? His Hyperbloom teams will tend to perform better than the general, like, default Hyperbloom teams do when you're in AoE content, because again, he can consolidate his AoE very easily, but they'll actually generally not necessarily perform as well in single target content. It's relatively similar to how Ayato Hyperbloom works, but better. <laughs> how much crit rate do you need to build on him with Michael Z Hunter? Michael Z Hunter gives you 36% crit rate, so if you're at 64% crit rate, with set you have a hundred. Does that mean you have to build that much? No, but that's where building more give, brings you over a hundred percent crit. When you have sets like Marshall Say or Blizzard Trader that give you external sources of crit rate, you shouldn't look at it as, ooh, I, I need to build a certain amount to max out my crit. You should look at it as my crit rate is this number plus 36 or with Blizzard Trader this number plus 40. And then you still want the same things that you usually want out of crit ratios, right? You want it ideally somewhere close to one to two and as much crit as possible, as long as you're not over a hundred. You look at me, I'm at 86, 86 to 181, 182, relatively close to one to two. Uh, obviously my artifacts aren't perfect, but my crit distribution is relatively good. I don't have a hundred crit rate, but I don't even have 200 crit damage. So I, it's, it's far from needing it. If you are running a crit weapon instead and you have better artifact quality, you might start getting, especially with his, with his signature, 
maybe upwards of like 250, maybe even 300 or more crit damage. And at that point, getting close to maxing out your crit rate starts to matter a bit more because you have so much crit damage. You're getting further and further away from one to two. So obviously favors crit rate more and more, but it's still not something you need to do. How much better or worse will HP Gauntlet be in scenarios with him and Farina, considering all the damage percent he gets? It depends on how much damage percent he gets, right? Just keep in mind when you're running him with Farina, you're also getting a uh, Hydro Resonance, which is HP. The reality is use the Optimizer. That, that's that's what it boils down to. It's just, uh, it's good to know that HP Goblet can be better. And even when it's not better, it can be competitive. So if you have an HP Goblet with really good substat, it's good to know that it might be worth keeping and leveling. But outside of that, just use the Optimizer. And what are some of his best teammates? Kazuha, generally a very good teammate. Nahida, generally a decent teammate. Tang Ling, generally the best teammate for speedrunning. Very often hard to use if you're not speedrunning though. Zhong Li, general good Raiden if you're playing Nahida. Fischl, Farina, yeah, obviously. Uh, Venti is actually pretty good as well. Generally, you don't really need him for Venti though, or you don't need Venti for him because again, he consolidates his AoE so well. So the grouping for Venti becomes a little bit redundant. Lila, Beto. Oh yeah, I didn't mention Baiju earlier. Baiju is also a fine option for Nahida. Do you have any recommendations Recommended teams to try. You still like the Daya team? I still do, yes. It's still my favorite of his teams. Where you build Raiden on EM build with Dragon's Bane, Nahida on whatever traditional build she you would usually have her on, ideally with five artifacts on all four. Daya, Forest Regalia, Instructor. All right, you do Nebula E, Raiden E. Or sorry, yeah. Nahida EQ. Daya E. And then maybe that burst, pick up the Forest Regalia thing. And, and it's a team where his personal damage isn't that high baseline, but you actually get a few vase. And because you're using Nahida Burst plus Instructor plus Forest Regalia, that's basically almost 500 EM that he gains. Obviously, yeah, you're also, you're vaping his burst in, in this team, so you would obviously want to actually level your burst. Illusion shut. And as you can see, right, once we pick up the leaf, we're at a nice little 537 EM, which makes it so that when we vape, we vape for like 70k, 60k, whereas our normal charge attacks do about 20k, right? Obviously, it's gonna go higher if you're using a signature or a sock jade. Also, Witsith, because now you can make you can take advantage of two of the buffs instead of only one. But yeah, you're stacking so many EM buffs that it makes it so that his vapes, instead of dealing double damage, deal like more than triple. You're getting resistance to interruption, you're getting three stacks, you're getting Nahida's all field damage, and you're getting right on hyperbloom damage. It's not necessarily his best team, but it is the one that I've enjoyed the most, and it's still more than good enough. Let the mighty be humble. Silence. Oh, I. These enemies, uh, not the best to show this on. Because... Uh, of the dendro resistance, but that's fine. Please hold for just a moment. Oh, goodness. That was not very good. Let the mighty be humble. Alright, still very solid team, and unlike most of Nebulet's other teams, it deals a very reasonable amount of non-hydro damage, so against hydro immune enemies, you're not gonna feel like shit. <laughs> How is his vape team compared to Child International? It's generally gonna be better. That being said, I think there's a lot more scuff that goes into it. And if you're not a speedrunner, it's very likely that you get similar results or even worse results because it is harder to play and the setups are a lot less reliable. Anyways, I think that's gonna do it for the Nebulet Ask the Jeff. Uh, I hope you guys learned a thing or two. As usual, make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, YouTube.
stood on Gunji. Boda Shen Hua. Gapumi Deoda, 